BlackRock is going to do what BlackRock is going to do. Yeah. They are the largest asset manager in the world. I told people for a year, there was no question in my mind. As soon as they announced they were going after the, the Bitcoin ETF, it, not only was it going to get approved, they were going to be first. BlackRock has applied for an ETF in Ethereum as well. I think the challenge now is who has the bigger you know, stick, shall we say. Everything is political. Ms. Warren is pretty anti all of this. Why? Well, my thesis, I won't, I won't put words in her mouth, but my thesis is you look at her largest campaign contributors. They happen to be large financial institutions that have a great deal at stake if they are disrupted. So it's not surprising to me that she would craft legislation to slow down the, the disruptive technology. Amid all the success of Bitcoin ETFs, attention has shifted to the potential for an Ethereum ETF. Despite opposition from government regulators, Mark Yusko of Morgan Creek Capital Management remains optimistic about its prospects. In his recent interview, Yusko outlines the hurdles BlackRock faces in securing approval for the Ethereum ETF, particularly regarding political and institutional challenges. Senator Elizabeth Warren's reservations about disruptive financial technologies could further complicate the approval process. Yusko also discusses how traditional institutions use fear, uncertainty, and doubt tactics to impede innovative technologies like blockchain, emphasizing the significant influence of financial entities on policymakers. We will now bring you clips from the interview. Stick around until the end for Yusko's insights on why he believes BlackRock could ultimately succeed in this endeavor. As we show you these clips, please take a moment to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more similar videos. We hope you enjoy it. Definitely FUD, you know, definitely fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, that, is, that is how the incumbents deal with technological innovation, right? So blockchains are the future of computing, full stop. And they're not, you know, the technology is not going away. The FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt is spread every single time there's an innovation in technology that threatens incumbents' livelihood. So you can go back to the internet, right? AT&T and Verizon tried to kill, literally, the internet because they didn't like what you and I are doing right now. Voice over internet protocol is free. They charge $3 a minute for long distance. You know, we're far away from each other. And they liked charging $3 a minute for that. So they tried to get a bill passed and they spread all these rumors about how the internet was bad. And thankfully, I would say, you know, Al Gore did not invent the internet, but he did kill that bill, which stopped them from, from over-regulating it. And, you know, the same thing's true now. The banks are being disrupted by these chains. And financial services, as we know it, which has had a good 838 year run under its current form based on trust is being displaced by truth. Blockchains give you truth. And therefore, as we think about, you know, how would you stop these, these chains, these, these innovations from happening? Well, we'll, we'll over-regulate them. Well, they tried that with Bitcoin. They tried to over-regulate, they tried to regulate by um, attack on, you know, new technology and, and new innovation. And what happened? The courts said, Gary, you've <clears throat> overstepped your bounds. And now we have Bitcoin ETFs and, and they're part of the culture of the future of financial services. For sure. So now next up is Ethereum. Well, Bitcoin is better money, right? It's a blockchain application for digital gold, or as Michael Saylor says, digital property. That is the future of money. Okay, great. Ethereum is different. Ethereum is the future of global compute. And you've heard, you know, Sam Altman and others say that compute is the most valuable asset uh, in the future. And, and that's true. 
and eventually it will be invisible, right? Like I can't explain to you, Paul, how I can talk into this metal and glass box on my desk and you can hear me and see me in real time in HD. I can't explain how that works, but, but I don't need to because it does, it's invisible. And I can't explain to you exactly how a hash is created for cryptography to work, but I don't need to. I just need it to work. And I need to know that once we have truth on chain, and that's different than online right. and different than offline. And online disrupted the old offline world. Well, now on chain is going to disrupt how we exchange value as opposed to goods and services, because anything of value can now be digitized, can now be created as a unique asset on a blockchain. That's the mind blowing part, right? I right. can take any asset in the world, create a unique asset that cannot be duplicated, cannot be double spent, cannot be challenged for who has title. It is digital property rights. And Ethereum is a global distributed network that allows certain types of transactions, as does Solana and others. And we'll talk more about the differences there. So that's a long-winded way of saying it's FUD, it's expected. And the reality is the courts forced the SEC and Chairman Gensler to approve the Bitcoin ETF. Yeah. There have been no well, such court ruling, no such lawsuit to force his hand on Ethereum. Right. Therefore, he can do all of this, you know, FUD campaign to make people afraid that it's not going to happen. And as we all as we all know, people will buy the rumor, whatever that rumor is, whether it's new technology adoption, whether it's new chips whether it's new products, and then they, some of them will sell the news. And so you'll get this run up in price. And then if it doesn't happen or it does happen, you know, they'll, they'll sell out of fear. If it doesn't happen, they'll sell out of, I'm going to take my profits if it does. And we saw that after the Bitcoin ETFs, and then they went back up. And now yeah. there's been some, you know, downside pressure. Ethereum ran along with it got all the way up over $5,000 and, you know, or $4,000, sorry. And Four, now, yeah. bam, back down again. Meanwhile, Fidelity Investments had also filed for an application to have its own Ethereum ETF. Recently, it has unveiled plans to integrate staking capabilities into its potential Ethereum fund. Following the announcement, Lido, the prominent staking protocol on Ethereum, witnessed a notable surge of 9% in its price reaching $2.64. While the price experienced a slight correction afterward, the positive response underscores the market's enthusiasm for innovative initiatives bridging traditional finance with decentralized technologies. Alongside BlackRock and Fidelity, other notable contenders in the Ethereum ETF space include industry giants like ARK Invest, 21Shares, and Grayscale. Let us now go back to the interview as Mark Yusko shares what he thinks might happen to BlackRock's Ethereum ETF application. If BlackRock really, really wants it to happen, yeah. it'll happen. Yeah. Well, um, because I think thing, they, yeah. they have a bigger stick. I think they do have a bigger stick than, than the current chairman. I think it's highly unlikely before the election because the current guy was appointed by the current administration Right. And so he's going to do what he has to do to stay. Now, if, if, if the administration were to change in November, how quickly would they replace you know, the SEC chairman? Probably pretty quickly. How quickly yeah. would that person, you know, do I think the ETH ETF is high on the agenda? No, I don't think it's hmm. the bottom, but I don't yeah. think it's the first thing they would do. And you know, here's the problem, political problem as I see it, it costs, from what I've read and, and studied, about $100 million to secure a Senate seat in the United States, $100 million. 
Most of us don't have that. So if we want to run, you have to raise $100 million. Well, it turns out if people write you one, 10, 20, $50 million checks, Paul, they expect something. Yep. And that's the way our system works in a world where you allow unlimited contributions to you know, packs and super packs. On the other hand, Bitwise's chief investment officer, Matt Hoogan, expresses skepticism about the likelihood of approving spot Ethereum exchange traded funds. Despite growing anticipation, Hoogan believes that additional time is needed for Wall Street to digest Bitcoin before considering Ethereum. The first Ethereum ETF application from Vanek is still awaiting a decision from the Securities and Exchange Commission by May 23rd, although analysts have revised the odds of approval downward to 35%. Hoogan suggests that delaying the decision until December could benefit the crypto industry and increase assets flowing into Ethereum ETFs. Other analysts, including James Seyfart from Bloomberg Intelligence, share Hoogan's skepticism about a May approval, citing the SEC's lack of engagement on Ethereum specifics compared to Bitcoin ETF. While Bitwise does not have an active spot in Ethereum ETF filing, Hoogan's perspective offers valuable insight into the industry's trajectory amid regulatory uncertainty. Meanwhile, the Ethereum Foundation is facing inquiries from an undisclosed state authority, as revealed in a recent GitHub repository update. At this critical time for Ethereum technology and its cryptocurrency ETH, American investment firms are striving to introduce an exchange-traded fund. However, despite recent approvals for Bitcoin ETFs by the SEC, Ethereum's ETF plans to face regulatory obstacles. According to Fortune, the SEC is contemplating categorizing ETH as a security, and it has issued investigative subpoenas to US companies, though the specifics of the inquiry are confidential. The Ethereum Foundation has refrained from commenting on this development. Previously shared assurances regarding government inquiries have been removed from the Foundation's website in a recent update on GitHub. There is speculation that Swiss regulators may also be involved, potentially affecting entities overseas. Analysts are less optimistic about the approval of Ether ETFs, citing limited interaction with the SEC. The timing of regulatory actions may align with an impending SEC deadline, suggesting heightened scrutiny of Ethereum-related issues. What is your outlook on the potential approval of the Ethereum ETFs? Do you believe they will ultimately be approved, and if so, what factors do you think will contribute to their approval? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this video helpful, we kindly ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more valuable insights on cryptocurrencies and finance. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you in our next videos. As always, happy investing.